Good day. Today we will be discussing about the basic principles of the Bill of Rights. Let's start with the meaning of Bill of Rights. Bill of Rights is the Charter of Liberty. It is the declaration and enumeration of a person's basic human rights to protect against violations by the government or by an individual or groups of individual. However, the principle of Bill of Rights as stated in our 1987 Constitution applies only to actions taken by state officials. Violation of Bill of Rights precisely as a constitutional guarantee can be done only by public officials. But that doesn't mean a person can violate our, our rights. They are still guaranteed by the Article, 9, uh, Article 32 of the Civil Code, but definitely not by our own Constitution's Bill of Rights. For example, um, there is the right to self-expression. If um, that violation is made by a public official, definitely um, that certain right is protected by our Bill of Rights as stated in our Constitution. However, if such violation was made or done by a private individual, it doesn't necessarily mean that pwede nang gawin yun because it's not protected by the 1987 Constitution's Bill of Rights. Bawal pa din because it is protected under Article 32 of our Civil Code. Okay? So, the things that we will be stating today are only for the acts or violations done by our state officials or our public officials. Okay, let's proceed with the classes of rights. Meron tayong tatlong rights. Okay, una natural right. Second constitutional right and third statutory rights. So I will explain this in Tagalog para mas madali. Natural rights, ito yung mga karapatan natin na kahit na walang batas, kahit na walang constitution, ay nasa atin. Okay? Ito ay yung pagkapanganak pa lang natin. Definitely, we have that right um, as a human being. Okay? Even without the presence of a constitution or a statute or a law. So that's natural rights. Second, constitutional rights. Of course, from the word itself, um, ito yung mga karapatan na naibigay sa atin ng constitution. A right, rights given to us by our, by our own constitution. So, third, statutory rights. Um, ito naman yung mga karapatan o yung mga rights na binigay sa atin ng batas. Okay? So, yung karapatan na galing sa isang batas na binalangkas o ginawa. Okay. Let's now proceed with the classification of constitutional rights. Okay, let's start with political rights. Um, political rights gives power to participate in the establishment or administration of the government. Ito yung mga karapatan natin para mabigyan tayo, para matulungan tayo na makisali para sa administration o sa sa, uh, sa establishment ng isang gobyerno. Ano pang example nun? Ang magandang example is our right to vote. Okay? So, mayroon tayong karapatang bumoto para pumili kung sino yung mga gusto nating mga officials to represent us or to be working in um, specific government positions. Second, civil rights. For private individuals, for the purpose of securing them the enjoyment of their means of happiness. So, ito yung mga karapatan na meron ng isang pribadong individual para magkaroon para ma-make sure ang kanyang enjoyment of happiness. Okay? So, ito yung mga batas na binibigay sa bawat isa para mas maging um, secured yung kanyang pamumuhay, para mas maging secured yung kanyang kaligayahan as a private individual. So, anong magandang example? 
um, no imprisonment for non-payment of debt or poll tax. So, as a general rule, nakalagay sa ating konstitusyon na ang isang tao ay hindi naman makukulong for the sole basis na meron siyang utang sa isang tao. Okay? But that's the general rule because um, there are criminal offenses na pwede ka pa rin makulong um, um, for the reason na nangutang ka. Like for example, kapag ikaw ay nangutang at nag-issue ka ng cheque, okay, pwede ka ng that's a criminal offense, so that's outside the ambit of that certain constitutional provision. So, yung batas na yon ay isang civil right dahil ito ay binibigay sa isang private individual para masecure yung kanyang happiness into achieving um, liberty or security. Okay? Number three, social and economic rights. Um, ito yung mga karapatan na para sa economic well-being ng bawat isang individual. Okay, ano ba ang example na nakalagay sa ating constitution? Ang magandang example ay yung just compensation or in layman's term, kapag ang isang tao ay may property at gustong i-take over ng gobyerno, dapat siyempre magkakaroon ng just compensation o babayaran ng gobyerno yung property ng kukunin nila sa tao. And the fourth one are the rights of the accused. Kapag ikaw ay nakasuhan, there is always the presumption of innocence. So, um, the rights of the accused are the rights protecting an, a person who is still an accused. So, para meron pa rin binibigay na karapatan ang mga taong um, kinasuhan pa lamang na wala pa pong hearing at wala pa pong judgment na binigay ang ating korte. Okay, so let's now proceed with Section 1 of the Bill of Rights. Okay, basahin muna natin yung kodal. Section 1, No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law nor shall any person be denied the equal protection of laws. So, in this certain section, um, there are two very important principles. Okay? So, let's start with due process of law. What is due process? Due process is the guarantee against any arbitrariness on the part of the government, whether committed by the legislative executive, or the judiciary. So, what's the scope of due process? Due process protects all persons within the territorial jurisdiction and it includes aliens. So, basta ikaw ay nasa inside the territorial jurisdiction of the Philippines, mag-a-apply sa iyo ang due process, ang principle of due process. What are the aspects o ano yung mga aspeto ng due process? Una, substantive due process. It serves as the restriction on government's law and rule making power. Ito yung due process na kailangang i-comply ng ating mga rule um, rule uh, ng ating mga lawmakers na um, ito yung limitation sa kanilang kapangyarihan na gumawa ng batas. So, what are the requisites? Ano ang mga kailangang um, matupad para mag-comply sa substantive due process? Una, there must be a valid law. Okay? So, dapat validly napasa. So, alam naman natin yung proseso kung paano magpasa ng batas. From, uh, from a bill to an act. Number two, to, it must be passed or approved to accomplish a valid governmental objective. Okay? So, ang isang batas na ginawa ng ating mga lawmakers, dapat meron siyang ma-accomplish ma na governmental objective. Hindi dahil trip lang nila, 
dapat ang bawat batas ay may sense na meron siyang um, meron siyang saysay at ginagawa niya ang isang governmental objective. Number three, objective must be pursued in a lawful manner. So, yung objective na nais gawin ng batas na yon dapat ay gagawin. Yung means niya dapat lawful. So, hindi porket meron kang um, valid governmental objective ay pwede mo nang gawin kahit na anong means. Hindi. Sabi sa ating requisite ng substantive due process, kailangan yung means o yung paraan para ma maitupad mo yung governmental objective na yon ay dapat lawful. So, number four, the law as well as the means to accomplish the objective must be valid and not oppressive. Okay, so let's now proceed with the second aspect of due process. The second one is the procedural due process. It serves as a restriction on the actions of judicial and quasi-judicial agencies of the government. It is the fair procedure in the judiciary and quasi-judicial agencies. So, syempre, alam naman natin kung sino ang ating judicial department. Let's try to um, get to know kung ano yung meaning ng quasi-judicial agencies. Um, sila yung may partly judicial character by the possession of the right to hold hearings and conduct investigations. So, hindi sila parte ng judiciary pero sila ay merong kapangyarihan na mag-hold ng hearings at mag-conduct ng investigations. So, sila yung tinatawag na quasi-judicial agencies. So, sige, let's now proceed with the requisites of procedural due process in judicial proceedings. Number one, there must be an impartial court or tribunal clothed with judicial power to hear and determine the case. Okay, let's give an example. Siyempre, if meron kang, um, meron kang isang criminal case, um, there is a, a court na assigned, na binibigyan ng kapangyarihan to hear and determine the case. It may be um, the MPC or the RTC as the case may be. So, there must be an impartial court clothed with judicial power to hear and determine the case. That's number one. So, let's proceed with the second requisite. Um, jurisdiction is properly acquired over the person. So, in criminal offenses, paano ba nakukuha, uh, paano ba nagkakaroon ng jurisdiction over the person of the accused, ang isang korte? It is acquired upon his arrest, kapag ikaw ay naaresto, apprehended, or kapag ay, ikaw ay nag-voluntarily appear sa korte. So, the third requisite for the procedural due process in judicial proceeding is the opportunity to be heard. So, ito yung chance o yung pagkakataon mo para depensahan ang iyong posisyon sa korte. So, it doesn't necessarily mean na kailangan mong magsalita in an open court. So, the opportunity to be heard is complied if through the submission of pleadings sa, sa court. Okay? So, hindi siya dapat orally lang yung opportunity to be heard. Pwede rin siya through pleadings. Number four, judgment was rendered upon lawful hearing and based on evidence. So, para makomply, finally, ang procedural due process, syempre, da, ang judgment o ang final decision ng korte ay dapat um, nakabase sa mga, pina, sa mga pinigay o pinasang ebidensya sa kanila. And um, dapat uh, pinagbasehan din ang mga nasabi o nangyari sa hearings sa korte. Okay, let's, so that's basically the two aspects of due process. So let's proceed with a, one important case, the case of Enot versus IAC. So there was an executive order pro, which prohibited the transportation of carabaos and carabeef from one province to another. So, yung petitioner, yung nag-file ng kaso, uh, nag-file siya assailing 
the constitutionality of such executive order dahil yung kanyang mga carabaos ay na-confiscate for violating such executive order while transporting them from Maspate to, to Iloilo. So, the petitioner challenged its constitutionality. So, what was the issue? Whether or not it is violative of due process. The court, the Supreme Court, held that yes, it is violative of the due process. The executive order defined the prohibition, convicted the petitioner, and immediately imposed punishment which was carried out front right. The measure struck at once and pounded upon the petitioner without giving him a chance to be heard. So basically, sabi ng Supreme Court, he, um, unconstitutional yung nasabing executive order na kapag ikaw ay nagtransport ng karabaw or kara beef from one province to another ay iko confiscate agad-agad yung karabaw mo and you will be imposed um, certain penalties as stated in the executive order. The Supreme Court stated na hindi po yun pwede dahil um, nawawala o na hindi na comply ang isang importanteng requisite ng, due, ng, subs, ng procedural due process which is the opportunity to be heard. So, um, definitely, yung mga batas imposing instantly or implementing violations or sanctions without giving an opportunity to be heard to people violating such um, law is unconstitutional. So, hindi dapat instant. Dapat, there is still the presumption of innocence kaya kailangan pakinggan ang kanilang posisyon kung bakit na nangyari o bakit na totoo bang nangyari yung, or nagawa yung certain action na yun. Okay, let's now proceed with uh, a very important principle. Um, the minimum standards in the imposition of disciplinary sanctions in academic institutions like a school, for example. Okay, so here are the following minimum standards or requisites for the imposition of disciplinary sanctions in schools or academic institutions. Number one, the students must be informed in writing of the nature and cause of any accusation. So, kung ikaw ay nagkaroon ng kaso or violation into an academic institution, dapat they should notify you in writing ng uh, kung ano yung nature o kung ano yung violation na na-incur mo to the, um, to the said um, academic institution. So, number two, dapat meron kang right to answer the charges against them with the assistance of a counsel if desired. So, kapag ikaw ay nakatanggap in writing ng isang um, violation o report na nagawa mo to an academic institution, dapat meron ka rin chance to defend yourself or to answer the charges na ipinataw sa iyo o isinen sa youth in writing ng isang academic institution. Number three, dapat you have the right to adduce evidence. Siyempre, um, hindi enough na ikaw ay may karapatan para sagutin ang mga paratang na ibinigay sa iyo. Dapat meron ka rin uh, karapatan na magpasa o magbigay ng ebidensya supporting or all um, your answers in the following allegations na binigay sa iyo. Number four, informed of the evidence against them. So, dapat kung ang isang kaso ay merong ebidensya laban sa iyo, at least dapat um, in, fully informed ka uh, at aware ka of the evidence na ginamit at pwedeng gamitin against you. And the last but not the least, evidence must be duly considered by investigating committee. So the, the imposition of disciplinary sanctions must be evidence-based. So dapat 
um, base sa ebidensya at yung ebidensya ang pinasa mo at pinasa ng nag-file ng uh, report or complaint against you, dapat i-consider duly by the investigating committee. Okay, so let's now proceed with the second important principle stated in Section 1 of the Bill of Rights. It is the equal protection of law. What is the meaning of this? All persons similarly situated must be similarly treated both as to rights conferred and responsibilities imposed. However, it does not demand absolute equality. So, hindi ang equal protection of law ay hindi nagbibigay na dapat lahat tayong tao ay pantay-pantay. Absolutely. So, no. Um, such equal protection of law principle